I just want to read a, a scripture first before we get underway out of Ezekiel. Um, the book of Ezekiel, if you have your Bibles. Um, familiar passage, passage of scripture, chapter 3 in the book of Ezekiel. just really spoke to me this morning, so I... It's not part of my message, but I just thought we'd read it together. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 10 through to verse 21. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear with your ears. And go, get to the captives, to the children of your people, and speak to them. And tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. That verse really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Go to the captives, to the children of your people. Mm -hmm. Speak to them and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Then the Spirit lifted me up and I heard <coughs> behind me a great thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another and the noise of the wheels beside them and a great thunderous noise. And so the Spirit lifted me up and it took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me and then I came to the captives at Tel Aviv who dwelt by the river Sheba. And I sat where they sat, and I reminded them, sorry, I remained there astonished among them seven days. Now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear a word from my mouth and give their warning from me. That verse is so pertinent because each of you are watchmen mm. in this hour. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also you will have delivered your own soul. Powerful passage of scripture. I don't know why I read that. I just wanted you to hear it. I think there's something in that for each of us. Mm -hmm. Expressing the mind of God always demands a price that so few are willing to pay. And with all the excitement that's happened in the last week, and I'm sure you're all kept up with most of it, or a lot of it, in the world, especially in politics. I have. I found it exciting, invigorating. It's like a, a, a fresh wind is blowing in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's easy to forget, whilst all this excitement is brewing, there is billions of people that still do not know our Saviour mm. and Lord. Yes that are caught in captivity, that are caught in Babylon. And whilst we see a shift of light penetrating into darkness, our hearts must remain focused, outside of all the excitement, on those that are going to hell. Mm. It's so easy to get caught up in all the hype and the movement of if God's goodness, and it's wonderful, and I'm not decrying it, but... We must remain focused that there is people going to hell 
while this is happening. And that's our focus. That's why the Lord brought us together to reach the brokenhearted, to reach the captive and to set them free. And exposing Satan's wartime is what I've labelled this today. Exposing Satan's end time war plan. Um, I'm not going to go into this in any great depth, but I think we always need to remind ourselves that there is a very real enemy out there. And often when things are going so well, that's when we're most vulnerable. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, in order that Satan might not outwit us, mm. be not ignorant of his devices. Mm. So we need to be cognizant of his devices. And remember, he is a spirit being that is created by God with great intelligence. Let us never think that this is a nobody we're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. He is a master at what he does. Mm. I'm not elevating Lucifer, but he is a master mm. at what he does. Mm -hmm. And having knowledge of the enemy and how he functions is crucial to living in God's purpose for each of us. And the nature of the enemy is always to mask himself. Mm. He wears a mask. <laughs> he doesn't look how he really is. Of course, over the years, pictures are painted of the devil with a fork and all the rest. That's not how it is. Quite the opposite, you know. Um, working from an offensive position rather than a defensive position is where we need to be at this time. In other words, we're attacking, mm -hmm. we're not trying to defend. Uh, let's not become so comfortable while things are starting to look good because that's the time the enemy will attack. So we need to be on the attack always. We need to be engaging constantly in the spiritual warfare. And we need to be a voice that's willing to sound the alarm, declaring righteousness and not be afraid of persecution. And if we look back at the First and the Second World War, which I don't know a lot about other than what I've read, the enemy was quite easy to detect at that time because the enemy wore a uniform and... They had a flag. It was quite easy to know who your enemy was. We're dealing with someone in something far superior than that. Using our natural eyes and natural ears is not going to cut it, and it's a surefire way to lead us into deception. We cannot walk by our natural eyes and our natural ears. We've got to walk in the Spirit. Hence the reason Paul said in Galatians 5, walk in the Spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Being led by the Spirit is so important in this hour. And we can see a major shift happening in the U.S. where darkness that has been parading as light is being exposed. That's actually what's happening. The darkness was already there, but the light's getting shone on it at the moment. So that's what we're seeing. And the Bible warns us many false prophets are going to arise in this hour. And I know I'm jumping all over the place, but these are mm. the enemy's yes. tactics. Mm. What you were talking about this morning, this spirit of Python, this, mm. this snake, we've got to be aware that this spirit of deception, this spirit of, of counterfeit prophetic, the Bible says in the end times, false prophets will arise. That's what it's talking about. It's not even. It's not talking necessarily about in the church. It can be in the church, and it can also even be on the news media. Yeah. It's yeah. prophecy is when someone declares something into existence, yeah. and you know. So we're going to be so aware of what we're hearing and what we're accepting. Yeah. Um, this week we we've seen on the media. I don't know if you've watched any <coughs> news, but. There's been a presenting of what was called facts, and, and the new president has said that most of this is false. It's not facts. It's false news. And, and, and so the light's even going on the media now. We're starting to see things that we never saw before. I know for myself, often I just believe what I'm hearing. Now we're starting to see a very different picture. We're starting to see... The truth. And, you know, the same media presenting these falsehoods are motivated by promises of money and success. We've got to understand what the spirit that's behind this. Jesus said that the love of money is the root of all evil. In other words, all evil comes out of that one thing. Money, the love of it, is what causes this whole thing to work. So these elite wealthy people are controlled by Satan with his agenda to sweep as many into hell as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't need to name names, but interestingly enough, a lot of these 
elite wealthy people are <coughs> getting near the end of their life. Yes. They've hit the 90 mark. So they're soon going to be facing God. We actually need to pray for them because they're going to be standing before him very soon. Mm. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Paul warns us, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. I believe that includes the media, the airwaves, because that's where the media is presented, through the airwaves. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. And you know, Proverbs, you know these scriptures, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. What we confess, what is spoken over the media, over the airways, is creating life or death. Life or death. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to be careful what you're taking on in this hour. Watch the same agenda in this nation with our media. Mm -hmm. We need to be very aware. What the Lord is showing us in the US is a parallel of what's happening all around the world. Mm -hmm. Be aware of what is coming across the news media. Just because a nice news presenter says it doesn't mean it's truth. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah 5 verse 20 says, Woe well unto them that call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. And This is the hour we, the church, need to rise up and be a voice, be a vessel that is not afraid to confront any evil form. In our prayer time, we need to be pulling down these strongholds of untruth in this nation. Mm -hmm. Our heart has to go out to this nation. Truth has to rise up in New Zealand. Righteousness needs to rise up in this nation. So we need to take on these spirits, and they are spirits that are controlling a lot of what is, is programming people's lives. Mm -hmm. This is the hour for the church to arise, to bring its light out from hiding it under a bushel, as Jesus said, don't do it. And I heard this week one man say, why would you worship an entity that inflicts sickness and disease on innocent children? This is an educated man who said this, by the way. And clearly this man is lacking an understanding of a loving God. But you see, this is what you and I are up against in this world. That people don't understand the loving God, the one true God. A group of Norwegians got upset with President Trump cutting the funding for the abortion issue. And the language they were using, even on television, against that. They said, right, we'll fund it. And I thought, you people don't understand a loving God. This whole abortion thing, it has to stop. We, the church, have to engage in prayer and see the stop in this nation. Mm. Killing human beings. Human beings. We need to be a voice for this stuff in this hour. It's got to stop. A woman, woman said on the television, she said, no one has the right to tell me what to do with my body. Mm. Blind deception. Mm. Total blind deception. Forgetting it's not about her, it's about another being's life. Total deception. Since when is murdering a human being, an innocent human being, being made legal? It's not. Mm. It's against our laws. We, the church, need to stand up against this. We need to fight. We need to ask God, have righteousness and justice done in this nation, in this area. <laughs> Mm. From the beginning of time, a war has been taking place between Lucifer and mankind. But how many really know the face of evil, what it actually looks like? Pictures are painted of the devil, we know, but that's not how it is. The Ezekiel 28, verse 12 to 13 says, You were the seal of perfection, yes. full of beauty. Mm. That's what the devil looks like. Mm. Not this pitchfork with horns. The seal of beauty, full of perfection. Mm. Full of perfection. 2 Corinthians 11, 4, 14 says, For Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. And the word we need to note is this word masquerade. Satan masquerades, pretends to be an angel of light. And the very area Satan masquerades himself in most powerfully is in the 
a religion in, in the area of the church, in, in the area of religion. This is the area where he is at his strongest. He's not interested in those that are already fallen. He's interested in those who haven't fallen. And it's in this setting, six out of the seven churches, Jesus Christ himself instructs in the book of Revelation. Six of the seven churches, there is some form of evil, some form of darkness operating in those churches. Darkness parading as light. And in the Laodicean church, Jesus can't even get into the door. We need to be aware yeah. of what's happening. To the outsider out there, all those churches look like they were representing God. To the unsaved, as long as it's got a name above the door, it's representing God. Well, they weren't according to Jesus. Six of them were not. And it's here that Satan convinces men and women to place themselves in positions of leadership when they do not meet the required standard of the Word of God. What our brother attended last week is a tragedy that should not have happened. Mm -hmm. Should not have happened if the watchman over that church had been watching. Many have been called by God but run ahead into positions before their time. Same tragedy, same outcome. And many have not been anointed or appointed by God and are self-appointed. And I believe we're in that hour that there's a shift happening. Mm. That God is going to raise up. He's going to bring out of the caves his anointed. I mm. believe that with all my heart. I do. Religion is a division between the spiritual and the natural. That's what religion is. Mm. It's a division between the spiritual and the natural. But God made the two to work in mm. harmony. Mm. God made the two to work in harmony. Yes. And this is the time in history this great idol mm. of religion is going to be exposed. The spirit of truth being quenched by the muddy waters of much ministry. But God is going to deal with it in this hour. We need to pray, like our sister said, for the churches. Mm -hmm. It's time, as President Trump said, for the swamp to be empty. Mm -hmm. That applies in the church as well as the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. John 6.38, Jesus said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the one who sent me. Mm -hmm. That book of John, if that's all I had, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. it's, isn't it just an awesome, mm -hmm. the gospel of John? Mm -hmm. It is in doing the will of the Father that we are released from this wretched spirit of religion. Mm -hmm. When we do the will of the Father, the only type of religion that Jesus said was acceptable, or actually James, the half-brother, he said, pure religion is this, to look after the widows and the orphans. Mm -hmm. That's what he said, pure religion. Mm -hmm. Thank God. I am so happy to be a part of a people that understand true religion, to care for those in need. Romans 12, verse 2, be not conformed. Be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed. Be shaped by the Word of God. That's where our unity is going to come from. Otherwise, we'll never be unified. See, we're entering into a time when all of hell's forces will be unleashed upon the earth. Yeah. Multitudes will be swept into the kingdom of darkness. The Bible tells us there's going to be a great falling away. A great falling away of God's people. In order for there to be a great falling away, there has to be a lack of discernment. You don't have a falling away if you're discerning. Mm. Meaning there is a lack of discernment. Discernment of knowing God's will and knowing 
Satan's plan. So, we don't know the plan of the enemy. We will be on the defensive. Amen? Instead of on the offensive. And I read the scripture, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. It says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows his time is short. Now, the reason I read that is because that's what we're heading into. Mm. Up until now, Lucifer has had the privilege, if you can call it that, of entering into God's presence, like he did with Job, and presenting your life and my life to God and saying, but look, he is the accuser of the brethren, the Bible says. So up until now, he's been able to do that. He's been able to stand in the courts of heaven and debate with God over your life and mine when we fail. But there's coming a time that he gets cast out of heaven permanently. I'm not talking about going way back into Ezekiel the first time. I'm talking about he cannot function anymore, not even in the second heaven realm. Mm. There's coming a time for that, and this is it. And up until this time when the angels cast Satan, sorry, up until this time when the, the angels of God cast Satan out of heaven, he has been accusing <clears throat> you and me. But when he comes here, he no longer can do that, so he's furious. Mm. He's furious. He is on the attack. All his forces are on the attack. We are entering into this time. We have not experienced what this is going to be like. Mm. This is going to be dark. So the Bible says that great darkness will be across the earth. This is why. And he's in a rage because he knows his time is almost up. And this is the time we know is the tribulation. Be not ignorant of his devices, his strategies. We are not to be ignorant of his changeable strategies. He doesn't have a book and that's all he can do. He can keep changing his strategies. Mm -hmm. We need to be on our alert. One of the things I've observed is that the enemy is after churches. He is after whole <coughs> congregations, <clears throat> whole congregations, whole churches, whole denominations. And I, I, I don't want to get into details on this, but we need to be aware. His attack on the congregation is always going to start on the leader of that. Yeah. You need to lift up me in prayer. You need to lift up the leaders of other churches in prayer. It's not easy to pray for the whole church, but you can pray for the leader of that church because he is the one that Satan's going to take out first. Mm. He is the one that Satan is going to try and trip up first because once he's done that, the protection, the covering over that is removed. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Satan came down to the church at Galatia and Paul asked that church... Uh, Solemn question, he said, who has bewitched you? A spirit of witchcraft had entered the church. It had entered through rebellion against God's word. <clears throat> witchcraft was in the church. This was a good church. But that opened the door to the enemy. He came to the church at Corinth with a spirit of lust. The church, as Jesus mentions in the book of Revelations, Ephesus, he attacks their love and their devotion to Christ. The church at Pergamon, he attacks by sending false doctrine. We need to be aware of these things. Mm -hmm. The pirate era, he sent teachers with a Jezebel spirit, controlling spirit. We have all seen that <coughs> over the years. We have seen this in the pulpits with some of our acquaintances, this Jezebel spirit. And at Sardis, they were dead. They were going through formality, but they were dead. At Laodicea, he said the spirit of lukewarmness. Let's be aware of how he attacks, what his devices are. The spirit of God, I believe, would say today, there is a cleaning going on in my house. 
a cleansing in my house. For judgment must begin in my house. Old administrations will be set aside to make way for new administrations in this hour. That came to me this morning. I believe that to be true. The enemy's strategy in these last days is to take down those who are in leadership. True leaders. True leaders. Leaders that are truly hearing the voice of God. Why do you think he went after Jesus Christ himself? If he had have got him, we wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but he couldn't get him. Because Jesus said, I only do what my father tells me to do. And that's the key for mm -hmm. unity. Mm -hmm. That's the key for the church in this hour. I only do what my father tells me to do. Mm -hmm. Those who are walking in the flesh allowing the intellect, personal opinions to be elevated above God's word, receive not from God. The Bible says the natural man receives not the things of God, for they are foolishness to him. And Paul said, neither can he know them. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. We know these scriptures, mm -hmm. but they're so powerful. That's so powerful. Paul speaking to the church at Corinth said, I came to you not with the wisdom of man, but with a demonstration of power. Mm. And sometimes we, we, we think this power is some majestic display of miracles or, or God's great outpouring. But I don't actually believe that's what Paul was talking about. I believe Paul was talking about, I came to you with power, meaning the power of the Word of God. Yes. The Word of God that can divide truth from a lie, mm -hmm. darkness from light. Paul's message of holiness was power. When we live this righteous life, when we live in a place of holiness, we are living in a vacuum of God's power. That's the power I believe Paul was talking about. The only way we can do it is what the Bible tells us. Come out from amongst them and be separate. Be not unequally your... These are, these are, this is the power of God. These verses are full of power. Because as we apply these verses, we get empowered with truth. And we get set free. For without faith in God's word... We cannot please Him. That's power. Without faith, we can't please God. But with faith, we can please Him. That's power. And these are the messages that changed lives back then. Mm -hmm. And they're the same messages that change lives today. It was the unadulterated message of truth that powerfully changed lives. The power is not... In the miracle, the power is in the Word of God because the mm -hmm. Word of God is the truth mm -hmm. and it sets the captive free. Mm -hmm. The people's lives have become so focused on this world, they were still seated on the throne instead of God. We need to get off the throne if we're on it. Hard message, but it's the truth. Sometimes mm -hmm. each one of us, including myself, there's times when we get back up on the throne. Mm -hmm. And we say, God, move on over. It's my turn. <laughs> well, come on, I'm not the only one. We've all done it. Amen. The message of hope for this year is what the Lord gave Isaiah. Isaiah 10, verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day. Mm -hmm. What day? The day the people will turn back to their God. His burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of his anointing. Amen. All as it takes is turning back to him, and the pressure comes off. Yeah. <laughs> like our sister's testimony this morning. That is so encouraging to me, because th for a while she'd been carrying <coughs> this yoke. We all know that. Mm. But praise God, it's been removed. Mm. <laughs> Amen? Amen? The year of the crown sword will be a wonderful year of breakthrough and victory. And those who have turned from their old ways back to the ancient mm. paths. 
turning from sin, which will require time spent in his presence. We know that. Time spent in his word. Much of the problem, much of the problem today in the church in Christendom is not knowing what is sin and what is not because so many don't know the word of God. That's the problem. It's that simple. If we know the word of God, it will set us free. Amen. And it is critical we spend time with the Lord to receive our right alignment in this hour. For some of us, it may mean moving to another place. Some of us, it may not be moving to another place. For some of us, it'll be cutting off the old, a severing of the old. But for all of us, it's Deuteronomy 28. If you'll hearken diligently mm -hmm. unto the word of the Lord and do all that's written, then these blessings shall come upon you. So changes that may come this year may be changes of location, houses, buildings, debts. Mm -hmm. I believe that some of us will be set free. Amen. 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 And and not only not only debts of finance, but debts of problems with people that mm -hmm. <laughs> unforgiveness or whatever. I be, I believe this is the time God is going to set the record yeah. straight. Amen. The great shaking mm -hmm. throughout the earth will continue to happen as God's sword will penetrate the darkness in the church and in the political arena, mm -hmm. and through the shaking, new life will come. Mm -hmm. New life. That which has been previously dead is going to come alive. It reminds me of that wonderful passage in Ezekiel, the Valley of the Dry Bones. Mm -hmm. Prophesy to these dry mm -hmm. bones. Amen. And life came back. That's the hour that we're living. It's an exciting time. Yes. Amen. Death is going to be swallowed up and life is going to come back. Yes. And a voice of change is here in this hour. Proclamation mm -hmm. of change is what we need to do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. This is the season to uproot the old and plant the new. And I'm going to wrap it up mm -hmm. here with this. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. Then the Lord put forth his hand and he <coughs> touched my mouth and he said, look. Yeah. I have put my words in your mouth and yes. I have set you over nations and I have set you over kingdoms Amen. to root up yeah. and pull down, to destroy and to throw yeah. down, yeah. to build and to plant. That's yeah. the message for today. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Root pull up. up, root up, Amen. plant new. Yeah. Moreover, he said unto me, what do you see? And I said to him, I see a branch of an almond tree. And the Lord said, you've seen well. Mm. I am ready to f perform my word. Mm. Now, what is the relevance of this almond tree? Almond trees are the first to blossom and the last to bear fruit. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. The church is about to bear fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what it's about. This prophecy is given to this young man, Jeremiah, mm. is for Israel and the church today, and God has just issued a warning that there is hope on the horizon. Mm. Yes. Amen. There is hope on the horizon. Don't be discouraged. But there is a shaking happening with this hope. See, mm. the church is starting to blossom. But I tell you what, fruit is going to appear soon. Mm. We're going to see this great harvest come. Yeah. Yeah. This is the time to root up, to pull down, mm. and to plant. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your word. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you never leave us alone mm. to try and do things ourselves. Mm -hmm. You always give us hope where there seems to be no hope. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word that it's true, mm. every single word of it. Yes, it is. We can trust it, we can depend upon it, we can rely upon it. Yes, we and thank you for the great season we're in, Lord. Mm. Yes, thank you for the privilege of being alive in this yes. hour. Yes. Yes. And Lord, we just pray this week that you will connect us with somebody mm. or somebodies. Mm. That we may be able to speak life and hope and to encourage. Give us great boldness like you did those early disciples. Yes. Yes, and we ask you to infuse us with power from on high mm. to fulfill your purpose for each one of us. Yeah. Mm. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.